Hey guys, uh, Ash here again, back for another weekly video on how the truck is progressing. And today we are um, continuing on with the programming of the, uh, the race pack software. Um, so a bit of a uh, bit of a refresher. So, one thing which I forgot to do was read the instructions thoroughly enough. And one of the points that they make in the uh, race pack software instructions is um, that you should do your programming before you wire the car. Um, and, that, and that's because the, the smart wire is going to come in whatever state it's in and if you go and wire your car and then put power onto it you don't know what's going to happen it might start trying to turn the car over it might start trying to run a pump it might start trying to do something that you don't want it to do so for that reason what they recommend is you get your smart wire you wire it up with just your power and your grounds you program it then you wire it completely out to all your devices that it's controlling and um, and and then you'll uh, and hopefully you know you get your you can um, go through and um, commission all your uh, your devices that you've wired in and hopefully you get it right uh, by doing it that way also you'll real you'll get a better understanding of the capabilities of the uh, smart wire because one thing I overlooked, I kind of thought it was smarter than what it turns out to be. So, I was treating it like a PLC. Uh, I come from an electrical background where um, you know, I'm quite familiar with program logic controllers. And, and not to mention, even my ECU can do this. So, I was a little bit disheartened when I found out the smart wire couldn't do it and it was a bit late because I'd already wired it and that was that is the output channels are only power output channels you can't determine you can't program them to be a ground output they can only be a 12 volt output so I had because I hadn't you know read the uh instructions all that well I sort of skimmed over them uh, all of my ancillary relays I had actually wired I don't know if you're going to be able to see this but I basically wired them all back to the smart wire um, as a switched ground so I needed the so even though it's a switched ground it's not a switch it's not an input it's an output, so I needed the the uh, smart wire to output a ground to these uh, the accessory relay, the blower relay, all the all those relays down there, um, because I just jump jump it off the um, the main feed to the the coil side with the 12 volt. Now look, it wasn't a major thing to rewire and change, but it was a little bit disappointing. Because, uh, you know, they're not cheap and it really wouldn't be that much, that, that difficult for Race Pack to implement, even if they had limited channels that you could do that. It would literally be for them probably an extra one or two switches that you could turn on and say, well, these ones aren't just bus, bus fed. They can be either 12 volt bus fed or ground um, or ground fed so then it gives you a lot more um, a lot more opportunities 
to uh, to do things. But so that so trap for the newbies. I'm sure everyone that's been de dealing with uh, race pack for a while already knew all that. But um, yeah, I wasn't super impressed. <laughs> anyway, it's done now. I've rewired the um, the relays so they're um, 12 volt switched rather than ground switched. Um, and uh and yeah and, and and the other thing that like i i didn't do was um i re i wired the car first and then i planned to program it later based on how i wired it um, and then the problem was was when i put power onto the um onto the system straight away the engine started to try and start like the starter motor was active and all sorts of things um, I had kind of identified that could be a possible problem, so I was ready on the kill switch and um, and I killed the power straight away. So what I've had to do to get past that is I've actually, down here, I've actually pulled, uh, in the last video, you, this is just a quick recap, I've pulled the, the header plugs out and I've temporarily just wired in the grounds to the um, into the header plugs manually through the back there and um, just so I can power up the smart wire without um, without any risk of starter motors turning over or pumps running dry or whatever it doesn't matter because all the because even though the car is wired because the plugs are unplugged all the outputs are, are void they can be outputting but there's no power going to anything so I've done that I've powered up the, um, the smart wire I've downloaded the initial config file and um, and what I did was I actually transferred the config file this is today's mission so I transferred the config file uh, onto a thumb drive and I have been programming it on my desktop inside um, so this morning what I plan to do is transfer the config file from the desktop I put it on just put it onto the laptop and um, and we're going to see if we can um, download it to the, in my case, the IQ3 dash, which is the, the logger dash. Um, so I'm not running a standalone system. Now just bear with me for a sec. I'm just going to plug in the laptop and I'll uh, see if I can share my screen. So you're going to need um you're going to need the serial to USB adapter See if we can um, start a screen capture so you can see what's going to be happening in the background. Alright, so 
this is our um, when you load up race pack this is the um, the screen that you get um, if you've already pre-loaded a config file um, so you can see up the top here I've just named mine ash tt config um, obviously I'm only dealing with my own so I don't need to have all the different um, config names so it actually is talking about because of the setup that I've got um, so if you're not running the dash as a standalone or the smart wire as a standalone you need to program the system from the um, the primary logger so for me I'm running the IQ3 logger dash and that is my primary logger um, maybe you have a logger dash but then you've upgraded to a um, uh, is it a VQ300 or, or what, whatever the um, the other dash the other loggers are um, in that case you'll be using that logger config file as your overarching um, uh, config for your whole system so you'll go into that logger config and you'll do your VNet scan of the system and uh, you'll then pick up that you've got a dash, a smart wire, whatever VNet sensors you've got on the system um, and all of that and then from there you'll then adapt that config file to uh, to meet your needs so um, so my particular system I've got the GPS set up so we've got all the uh, GPS data um, settings in here and we are running because we're in Australia we're running metric system so I had to select all the um, kilometers and meters uh, so when we get over to so my ECU type isn't going to work just yet because the way I've got it temporary set up or jump or jump it up is um, I'm not actually getting any power onto the ECU to send any signal to the um, universal CAN um, module, my race pack um, USM or whatever it's called. Um, so we're not able to configure that just yet. We'll be able to do that hopefully in a few steps to in, in a little while. Once we've um, downloaded this to the data logger, what we'll do is I'll go and remove my jumpers and plug the header plugs back in and then we'll re repower up and hopefully we will be in control and then we'll be able to bring the, the um, like the ECU online and the Dash app and, and configure those because I haven't been able to configure them just yet. Uh, so in here we've got our smart wire one, this is just, you can name it whatever, it's just, so if in, in, in the instance where you might be running two smart wires, obviously you're going to have smart wire one, smart wire two, or whatever you want to call it, PDM one, PDM two, um, and depending on your setup, you can turn the terminating resistors off on the VNet or the um, switch bus, so you should have a... Um, now I'm not an expert on this by any means, but you you should, to my understanding, you should have a um, a res resistor at the start and the finish of the system. So, in my case, I've only got one switch panel. It goes from the smart wire to the switch panel. So, correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. Get in touch. But my understanding is that. I need the the switch bus terminating resistor on and then at the other end on the um, the switch panel which is in here I also need the terminating resistor um, switched on so that's down here the, and that that completes that circuit now if I was to put in a second switch panel and it was to daisy chain out of this switch panel so if you look on the screen here we you would plug in here so you're coming in here 
and then you would come out of here to the next switch panel which would be over here somewhere in that instance we would turn the terminating resistor off for this switch panel we call this switch panel A and on switch panel B which would be the the end of the line we would need to turn the terminating resistor back on um, yeah so well, while we're in here we'll just quickly show you the um, the this is the switch panel setup I've got so we've got the starter ignition blue light horn blowers LED the root the large um, LED light the roof lights and the accessories All right um, and then how it works is these are just the names of what these switches are and then this is the well they're calling it the status ID but it's basically the relationship to what input or um, that it's linked to or what output so in my case here switch number two goes to the oh, what the hell is this shit? when we flick switch number two we're actually going to turn the ignition and the way I've labeled all my stuff it's either O for output or I for input so the output number 10 which is the so the output 10 on the smart wire bus will be putting power out to the ignition um, and when you flip that switch you'll be you'll be doing that so now I'm not so the plan is so I've, I've set all my stuff up in here now the plan is we're going to put the power on so the dash is powered up now now the power's on we need to write all of this to the um, to the system so hopefully this is going to do a global write so instead of if you were sitting here on the on the laptop plugged into your race car and you were doing changes per configuration um, heading or whatever you want to call it whether it be the switch panel whether it be like you know the smart wire one or one of these outputs every time you're in that heading you can uh, write or, or download or uh, I don't know what the term that they're using is um, you can you can write it to the back to the logger every single time but because I didn't want to sit here and um, program it each individual thing I wanted to do it away on the desktop uh, hopefully this my understanding is this should work so we're just doing a um, so what I did was I just saved all my changes as I was going and then we're just uploading all of the changes all at once right now rather than doing it individually so say say if we went into starter here and we made some changes right once we've made our changes if we're plugged into the race car you would then go send config now I haven't done that I just made my changes clicked OK and then I um, I saved the master config file as we went so now that we've we've saved these changes everything that's I've, I've programmed in here should be true or the same as what's on the hardware now so with that in mind what we're going to do now is I'm going to turn this off, I'm going to go offline and we will leave, we'll leave the laptop running I'll grab the camera and we'll go and see if we can um, put the header plugs back in
So I've got the power off now. I'm just going to sit this here. I don't know whether you're going to be able to see anything, but so what I had done is I made up these little um, female terminal jumpers and I had carefully plugged them on to the correct pins. Now you want to make bloody sure <laughs> you get it on the right pin because otherwise you're going to have some problems. that little jumper set up there I've just got it I'll show you in a minute but basically I'll take this off after just in case we need to use it again but you can see here this is our um, this is the little jumper I made up just for the, the grounds it, it just ran back there to that ground pin so we've just pulled that off we've uh, put our, our two header plugs back in there now alright so this time, hopefully, <laughs> you guys are going to see it here first whether we're an epic fail or not. So this time, we are going to power on, right? And hopefully the starter motor doesn't start starting again. Because I've told it that it shouldn't. But we'll see. So here we go. Well that's a good sign. That is a good sign. Um... Now, let's just have a think for a sec. Are any of these lights plugged in? Oh, I think I set these up. They won't come on until the engine's running. Alright. Well... I think we're uh, we're getting on for time. So that will do for this week's video. You'll have to come back next week to see how we how we go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. There's uh, we had a bit of a win. Nothing's uh, running, and I'm hoping that if I was to push this. The starter motor shouldn't go, but it should go if I were to put these on. Oh, I just heard something turn on.
that must be what is the second switch let's have a look on here oh that's accessories and if we turn that on Well, there you go. We've got a bit of uh, mucking around to do because I'm not exactly sure. I think they're getting the signal from the... I think the... Um, the ECU needs to be programmed yet and we haven't done that. So, we'll leave it there. Thanks, guys. If you haven't already, like and subscribe. If you have any questions, fill them in, write them in the comments down below, and I'll uh, do my best. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next week.